So in this lesson, we are going to learn how to find the maximum power that is delivered to a load by a source in any given circuit. Now let's start our discussion by stating the maximum power transfer theorem. So the maximum power transfer theorem states that the maximum power delivered to a load by a source is obtained when the load resistance RL is equal to the Thevenin's resistance RTH. So this is the condition for maximum power to be transferred or to be delivered to a load by a source. Now, in the previous lesson on Thevenin's theorem, we said that any linear two terminal network can be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of a Thevenin's voltage in series with a Thevenin's resistance. So we have this to be the Thevenin's equivalent circuit where we have VTH, that is the Thevenin's voltage in series with what we call the Thevenin's resistance. And then we have this to be the open terminal. So let's label this as AB and then we connect the load resistor in between the two terminals. So that is RL. Notice that the value of RL can change. What remains constant is the value for VTH and then RTH. Now let's try to find the current that flows through the load resistor. So to find the current I that flows through the load resistor, that is given by, we have I equals VTH divided by RTH plus RL. Now if you want to find the power that is delivered to this load, then that is equal to, we have power is equal to I squared R. In this case, I squared RL. Now we have I to be VTH over RTH plus RL. So we are going to have the square of that times RL. So this is the power that is delivered to the load by the source. Now, to deliver maximum power to the load, then we say that the load resistance should be equal to the Thevenin's resistance. That is the condition. Now, in that case, the maximum power that is delivered to the load by the source is given by VTH square divided by 4 times RTH. So, for maximum power to be delivered to the load by the source, then we say that the load resistance should be equal to the Thevenin's resistance and that the maximum power is equal to VTH square divided by 4RTH. Now, we have two expressions or two formulas for power. Let's call this equation 1. Let's call this equation 2. Now, you can use equation 1 if and only if the load resistance is not equal to the Thevenin's resistance. That is where you use equation 1. And then if the load resistance is equal to the Thevenin's resistance, then it means that maximum power is being delivered to the load and thus we are going to use this formula. So having this idea in mind, let's try an example. So we are going to find the value of RL for maximum power transfer in the circuits below and then we find the maximum power. Now to solve this question, we are going to first of all produce the Thevenin's equivalent circuits. So that is to find VTH and then RTH and then we connect the load resistor RL. So to find VTH, that is the Thevenin's voltage, what we are going to do is to remove the resistor, the load resistor. Okay, we are going to remove this load resistor and then we mark the two terminals and then we try to find VTH. So we mark the two terminals A, B and then we indicate VTH and then we try to find VTH. So let's do that together. So in finding VTH, the first thing we are going to do is to assign current in this circuit. So let's assume we have 20 volts producing a current of I. Now this current flows through the 3 ohms resistor and then at this point, because we have 
an open circuit the current will flow in that direction ignoring this open circuit so we have i flowing through this branch through to 2 ohms 10 volts and then returning to this node now at this node because this is a current source we are not going to share the current between the 5 ohms resistor and the current source so we have that same current flowing in this branch and then returning to the negative terminal of the source voltage now what happens to this 6 amperes current source this current source or this current is going to circulate in the loop in this direction in the clockwise direction over and over so the value of current flowing in this branch is literally going to be i minus 6 amperes so we have this i flowing in that direction and then because this current is going to be circulating in this loop that is going to be negative 6 due to what the direction we have this moving downwards and this is moving upwards so that is why we have negative 6 and then it is idle to say that since the 20 volts produce current i then we have current i also returning to the negative terminal of the voltage source if you want to consider the law of conservation of energy so after distributing current in the circuit let's try to find the value of i so to find the value of i we are going to consider this very loop now notice that if you want to apply kvl you always ignore the loop which contains the current source so we are not going to consider this loop because it contains the current source we are going to consider this loop now for kvl we know that the sum of the source voltages should be equal to the voltages dropped across the loop now notice the polarity this is taking the clockwise direction that is also taking the clockwise direction so the two are in line so we are going to add them so we are going to have 20 plus 10 and that is equal to we have current i flowing through 3 ohms so 3 i that is the same current flowing through 2 ohms so plus 2 i and then in this branch we have plus 5 into bracket i minus 6 now let's simplify this so on the left hand side we have 30 equals this becomes 5i let's expand this bracket so plus 5i minus 30 now we transpose negative 30 to the left hand side so we have 30 plus 30 equals 10i 30 plus 30 is 60 equals 10i we divide through by 10 by 10 and then we have the value of i to be equal to 6 amperes so the value of i is equal to 6 amperes now in that case we can move on to find the value of vth so we can find vth considering either this loop that is the first case or better still that loop the second case so let's do that so for case one let's assume for case one if you want to consider this very loop now we have vth moving in the taking the clockwise direction and then notice that we have 10 volts also taking clockwise direction that is if it produces a current so because they are in line we are going to add them so that is going to be vth plus 10 equals taking the clockwise direction we have current i notice that the same current i flows through the 2 ohms resistor so that is equal to 2i now we have i to be 6 amperes so we have vth equals 2 times 6 and then minus 10 and that is equal to 12 minus 10 and we have 2 volts so vth is equal to 2 volts now let's consider case 2 so if you want to use the other loop to find vth then we are taking the anticlockwise direction so also you have vth vth and then notice that the direction of vth is opposing this 20 volts so that becomes negative 20 and that is equal to also we are taking the anticlockwise direction we have this moving the opposite direction so that becomes negative 3i still in the anticlockwise direction we have our direction opposing the flow of this current so that becomes minus 5 into bracket i minus 6 
now let's resolve this so we have vth equals negative 3 times 6 notice that the value of i is 6 so 6 minus 6 is 0 times any other value is still 0 so we ignore this and then we have negative 20 we transpose that here to the right hand side and it becomes positive 20 so this is equal to negative 18 plus 20 and that is equal to 2 volts so whichever loop you are going to use you need to arrive at the same answer vth equals 2 volts now after finding the value of vth then we need to find the value of rth now what we are going to do is to deactivate the independent sources so a voltage source a voltage source becomes short circuited and then a current source becomes open circuited so we are going to redraw the circuit deactivating the independent sources and then we find rth so we are going to have this short circuit we have this 3 ohms resistor we have the open terminal rth And then we have two ohms short circuit this becomes open that is the current source and then we have this five ohms here so five ohms two ohms now notice that if you have a current flowing in this direction it is the same current that flows through the 3 ohms resistor that also flows through the 5 ohms resistor because we have, a, we have an open circuit here. Now, you realize that when you add the 2 because they are in series, you have 8 ohms. And then notice that these two resistors are connected at the same two terminals. So it's going to be something like you have RTH and then you have this to be you have this to be the 2 ohms resistor and then you have this to be the combined 8 ohms resistor now since the two resistors are connected to the same two terminals it means they are in parallel with each other therefore we have RTH to be equal to 2 parallel 8 which is equal to 2 times 8 over 2 plus 8 2 times 8 is 16 2 plus 8 is 10 and then we have 1.6 ohms so the value of rth is equal to 1.6 ohms now we are asked to find the value of rl for maximum power transfer in the circuit so for maximum power to be transferred to the load and then it means that RL should be equal to RTH. And then we have RTH to be 1.6 ohms. Therefore, RL is also equal to 1.6 ohms. So the value of RL for maximum power transfer in the circuit is RL equals 1.6 ohms. Now we are asked to again find the maximum power. So to find the maximum power, that is giving us P max equals VTH square divided by 4 times RTH. Now we have VTH to be 2 volts. So we have 2 square over 4 times RTH, that is 1.6 ohms. Now, 2 square is 4. 4 times 1.6 is 6.4. Therefore, we have the maximum power delivered to the load by the source to be equal to 0 0.625 Watt. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.